listen to me. Now you told me you're the director here of yes. Hard Knocks yes. on site. Just kind of explain the chain of command and how this all gets put together. Uh, sure, yeah. I have a crew of 32 people that are out here in the field with me. Um, I run uh, the operations in the field. We decide what gets shot, when it gets shot, who shoots it, players to wire, that kind of stuff. I coordinate with Ken Rogers. He's the uh, producer back in New Jersey, my counterpart. He handles the editorial side. So we shoot everything, we feed it back through a digital pipeline here. Uh, Ken's team of 20 to 30 uh, sub clippers and editors, they'll put the show together and uh, we collaborate sort of on uh, you know what that final product is on the screen. There's so many things about this show that I find fascinating. First and foremost, one of the things I love about what you guys do is I feel like you do a great job of really showing people just how hard this league is to be in. Was that the purpose? Was that kind of the goal when you started this or did it just come about organically? No, that's, that was the goal. The goal was, I think, the slogan, I don't know when it originated, but it's the five hardest weeks of their life. That's the slogan that's on our Hard Knocks posters. And that's, I mean, that's the goal. I mean, I think that's why the league took such an interest in this. I mean, it really showcases just what it takes to become an NFL player. I mean, training camp's brutal. The days are long, they're hot. Um, you know, it gives you an inside look at just what these guys go through. When you guys, so you're not working with a, a cast, so to speak. Your cast is chosen for you. You guys are the ultimate documentary of what this league is about. I think that's awesome as well. But how hard is it for you moving and kind of having to just go with whatever happens? It looks to me like you guys had plans to really feature Arian Foster on his comeback. Right. Then he gets hurt. You guys kind of had to switch gears. How hard is it having to just flow with what happens on a given day inside an NFL football team? You're almost like the coaching staff. Yeah, I mean, it's very challenging. Uh, you know, we come here, obviously we do our research, we have our plan, you know, and half of that gets thrown out the window in the first few days. Uh, Arian's a perfect example of a situation where you just have to adapt. I mean, you have to adjust and see what the storylines are. If something like that happens, it goes down. I mean, Rashard Clyde, you know, tearing his ACL, that was something that you just had to react to. And um, that's the nature of documentary filmmaking. That's the nature of Hard Knocks. Uh, I think we pride ourselves in being able to change directions at a moment's notice. Um, you know, some things you can guarantee, like J.J. Watt will be a big part of the show, but there's some things that you just have to adjust in the plot. Speaking of J.J. Watt, how nice is it for you? How much fun has it been? He's got such a big personality. So does Vince Wilfork. They've gotten a lot of the early camera time in the first two episodes. Are you? Has it been easier because you have faces of the franchise with those big, uh, those big personalities? Because sometimes the quarterbacks don't always show you that, do they? Oh no, of course. Uh, JJ and Vince have been great. I mean, that's the one thing you cannot account for. Great personalities, you know, being agreeable, you know, not shying away from the camera necessarily. I mean, there's been superstars in the past, hard knocks that you know. They popped up a little bit here and there, but I think JJ, you know, embraces that role. He embraces his uh, role as a leader in this team, and I think it's only natural that he'll pop up as often as he does in our show. How long does it take you to earn the trust of a coaching staff? You were inside the Patriot way. Bill O'Brien, right. definitely you can see some of the Patriot influence. We saw with Josh McDaniels in Denver. How have you gained the, the, the trust? Do you feel like you've gained the trust of the coaches? I really do. Uh, and I think on multiple occasions, Coach O'Brien has said that he's, he trusts us, that you know he likes working with our crews. I mean, look, we're NFL films. Um, we have the, the shield is on our paychecks as well. We take that very seriously. Uh, we're not here to embarrass anybody. We're not here to scandalize anything. Uh, I ask early on in this process that they give us our trust until we give them a reason not to, and I hope to never give them a reason not to. I, I believe we've done that here. Uh, I believe you see that in the show with the access that we get. That you know, we have an interest in giving the fans access, but we also have an interest in protecting our teams, and, and that's something we take very seriously. Talk to me about what could be next for this series. It's such a fantastic series. I know fans don't want it to go away, whether they're hardcore football fans or just casual football fans. My producer was telling me on the ride over, his wife can't miss an episode. She doesn't pay attention to the games that way. <laughs> Do you see it evolving? Would you like to see more cooperation from all 32 teams in the league? Uh, you know, I can't complain. I feel like uh, every year that we've done this show, we've gotten great cooperation from the teams, including the Texans. You can never predict what's going to be next year. Um, and it's all going to be based upon how these teams finish, whether there's you know, head coaching moves, that kind of thing. I mean, I feel like Hard Knocks has developed certain things that are formulaic and certain things that we try to push each year. You know, we're pushing our, our visual style, you know, you can't uh, predict whether or not you're going to get a guy like Bill O'Brien to be the head coach. You can't predict whether you'll get a cooperative superstar like J.J. Watt. I mean, these are all things that differentiate. Training camp is uh, tedious, but boring by nature. 
So really those personalities are what set each series apart and it's just a matter of who those personalities will be next to. You know, it's funny because you say it's boring, but you don't make it. You know, <laughs> right. I've been watching two weeks of Bronco camp and I feel like, man, I wish ours was as exciting as the Texans <laughs> watching the first two episodes. What are you most proud of during your time with this show? Was there one story that you told or one moment that you captured? Uh, you know, I think about there was a, a moment on the practice field with Brian Cushman uh, that was in last week's episode. Now, that's something that you'll watch the show and you'll think that's easy. I'll tell you what that was. That was having the right guy wired, Brian Cushing. We had uh, Alfred Blue wired. We had both those cameras following those two guys. And now on a given practice field, you know watching Broncos camp, when they go into individuals, there's six different groups around the field where there's different things happening. It's wide receivers on defensive backs, offensive line, defensive line. We had our one guy that was shooting slow motion action, happened to be shooting Brian Cushing and Alpha Blue. So when you saw that play three different times, I mean, there's a little bit of luck, but that's also, you know, instincts and that's our guys being in the right place at the right time. And that's kind of one of those things where it just magically comes together. And I was very proud, you know, that we covered it in the manner that we did. I do have to ask you, how has the heat affected you guys? Again, we barely wanted to walk out to restaurants and get lunch <laughs> in this Houston heat. You've been out there. It looks like that they're going to tough parts of the day. The players have shown it through your through your shows that it's wearing on them. How hard has it been on your crew? Uh, it's been brutal. It's a, you know, it's about 120 degree heat index on the field, uh, and that's the first thing in the morning. First thing these guys do is they gr they grab their equipment, they throw their equipment on the shoulder. Audio guys put their bags on, our PAs will put their giant backpacks and tripods and high hats and all that stuff. And they'll sweat through, you know, three hours of practice at 100 degrees. Uh, so there's a there's a cool down period after that where our guys will they'll change shirts, you know, they'll get hydrated. Uh, but it, you know, it's it's hard knocks, you know, it's that's what we do. Last one for you, do you people of Denver want to know, do you ever think that they'll be able to be featured on this? I know that you know, with Peyton there, it's, it's kind of a tricky situation, but do you ever think the Broncos could be the team on the, on the series? Uh, never say never. That's all I can tell you. Uh, it's, <laughs> always, it's always a year-to-year -year situation. Uh, you know, you never know who that team's going to be the next year. Matt, thank you. All right, not a problem. All right, thank you.